Michael Moore to present himself. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Michael. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Uh, merci, Jonathan. Uh, it's my pleasure and it's CSED's pleasure to be here today talking uh, with you about social enterprise and, and top tips for social enterprise. Um, it, uh, you know, I listened to you speak, Jonathan, in terms of uh, Francais, uh, Anglais, and I, I'm just, uh, I really wish that I had that ability. Um, unfortunately, uh, uh, you know, je parle français un petit peu, but I'm, I'm thankful that we do have an interpreter here with us. And, uh, and uh, as you say, for those, uh, for those people that are here uh, en français, fantastic. And if you're here en anglais, that's also fantastic. So um, what I'm hoping to do over the next uh, 40 minutes is share with you uh, our top tips for social enterprise success. So C said, uh, our goal is to create a thriving social enterprise ecosystem here in the Ottawa area. We work with charities, we work with nonprofits, we work with social entrepreneurs. And uh, what I'm going to share with you then is uh, the things that we've learned along the way in terms of, of top tips. Um, just before we start and welcome everyone, um, for people that are with us today, um, could I just get by a show of hands, if you are currently operating a social enterprise, could you just raise your hand? Just to see if we have uh, any, oh, there's, there is one, thank you. Oh, Jonathan, yes, of course. Uh, okay, for, uh, for people that are with us, if you're thinking about starting a social enterprise, perhaps you have an idea and you're thinking about starting one. Could you, could you raise your hand? Okay, thank you. And, and there's Peter, thank you. And Ilz, thank you. And uh, finally, if you're here just for general interest, and uh, maybe there, you have no specific plan in terms of social enterprise, you're here just to learn more about it, um, just raise your hand. Okay. That's great, thank you. So we have a we have a really nice uh, nice group of people uh, with us, and um, because it's a small group, Jonathan, um, you know, we'll make sure we have we have time for for questions, and uh, and I want to make this as much uh, value as as possible. Um, so, you know, when we think about social enterprise, we're really thinking about you know all of the big problems that we are trying to address in the world, and we know that there are very significant problems. And I, I feel very honored to be with you uh, to, to speak to people that are interested in social enterprise as a way of, of helping to address some of the big things that we deal with. So if we're talking about poverty, food insecurity, climate change, all of these are very, very significant issues. And social enterprise is a, is a great way for organizations uh, impact organizations to really make a difference. And so um, what I thought I would do before I get into the tips is um, just share with you our definition for a social enterprise. There are different definitions depending on who you uh, talk to. But I think from CSED's perspective, uh, a social enterprise then is, a, is an ongoing organization or program number one. Uh, secondly, it is created with that primary goal of having that social impact and that, that social impact could be cultural, could be environmental, could be social, but that is the mission, very much mission driven. Uh, the third uh, point is that you generate earned income by selling goods and services in the marketplace. So it is, it is about that exchange of value with your customers. And finally, as a social enterprise, you're reinvesting your profit back into your mission. So as your social enterprise becomes more successful, so is your impact, your social impact that you are, you are trying to make. So that's the, the starting point for us in terms of social enterprise. And when I think of social enterprise, um, I, you know, I, I recognize the fact, and, and hopefully you do as well, that it's not easy. So when we think of a social enterprise, you are trying to do two things. You are trying to operate 
a business on one hand, while also generating the impact that you are seeking to make. So that, you know, those two things together make it very complex. Uh, a traditional business is going to focus on quality and price. They will spend a lot of time trying to reduce costs, trying to make that business activity more efficient. Um, and of course, if you think of a social enterprise, one of the ways that uh, you may be you may be operating is to create jobs for people that have traditionally uh, struggled to, to to find jobs and so you can imagine if you are trying to employ people and train people that are that have struggled to find employment you can imagine then that you're not going to be as efficient. You're probably going to have higher labor costs. So it really just speaks to the challenge of running a social enterprise. And, and I think it, it uh, to me, even speaks more about the people that want to do this. So I hope my tips uh, that I'm going to share with you will really help you uh, with your social enterprise idea, whether you are starting a social enterprise. Social, si vous en êtes... no. So I'm hoping that the tips that we talk about uh, will really help you to become even more successful. Um, I should mention that I will, uh, we are keeping uh, an eye on the chat uh, box. So if you have questions, uh, we will uh, open it up for questions at the end. But if you have a question as we're going, just, just uh, put it in the chat box and that way we can make sure that we, uh, we address it. So, uh, 11 tips in total. And uh, tip number one is start with strategy. So if you have a, a well-defined strategy, you're going to have a North Star. You're going to have that overall sense of direction, that overall sense of purpose. Um, you, you will then be able to use that strategy to guide all of your, your actions. And so without a strategy, your actions are you know, likely to be all over the place. It'll be difficult to know what your priorities should be. Maybe you will spend money on things that, um, you know, that don't generate the results that you expect. Um, and I think it'll be frustrating. So with a strategy, you'll, you will know where your priorities should be. You're going to be more effective. effective. You're gonna, you're gonna be, uh, be better in terms of the role. So that would be tip number one. So tip number two is align with your purpose. And by that, I mean, is that that impact that you are seeking to make really needs to be the focus and core of everything that you are doing as a social enterprise. And I think that that is true, whether you're a social entrepreneur um, who maybe is, is thinking about starting an impact um, social enterprise, and it's also true if you're working within an organization. So what core problem are you trying to solve? So what is that social, cultural, environmental problem that you're trying to solve? What impact do you hope to make? And financially, what are your, what are your financial goals associated with this, this social uh, enterprise? So that's really going to make sure that your, your enterprising activities the sale of your goods and services are really going to be very closely aligned then and linked to your overall purpose. So let's go to tip number three. And I think tip number three, I call it, um, think like your customer. It's, it is so important to focus on your customer's problem not the solution that you have. So it's very important to put yourself in the mind of your customer as much as you can. So what is motivating your customer? Uh, your, your motivation of your customer is the core of, of what you need to understand. So what jobs are they trying to get done? What tasks are they trying to perform? What problems are they trying to solve? What needs are they trying to satisfy? 
That is the core of understanding your customer. The more that you can understand these things, the better position you're going to be with your social enterprise and the products and services that, that you offer. So, so it's really understanding that job that your customer is trying to do. That is the critical part of that customer uh, analysis. And so once you understand the job, then you can, you can look at then what outcomes and benefits do they hope to see as they're doing this job? And on the other hand, what are the barriers that are preventing them from being able to do the job that, that they are trying to do? So that would be tip number three, think like your customer. Okay, tip number four. So once you have, have understood your customer's perspective, then you need to understand the value that you're going to create as a social enterprise. So it is about understanding how do the products and services that you have help to support the benefits and outcomes that your customers want to achieve? Or how do your products and services, how do the features of your products and services help to reduce or eliminate the barriers that are preventing your customer from accomplishing the jobs, doing the jobs that they want to do. So when we think of your products and services as a social enterprise, you, it's important to remember that your products and services, there is no inherent value in your products and services. The value only comes in relationship to your customers and the things that they are trying to accomplish. So you want to create products and services for your customer. You don't want to create customers for your products and services. So I hope that makes sense. So you want to, you want to create products and services for your customer. So always being focused on the needs of your customer. Okay, so that was tip number four. I hope this is uh, making sense to you. I hope these are things that you're thinking about and that um, you know, that you, you can say, yes, this makes sense. And, and hopefully you're doing this now. So let's look at uh, tip number five. So once you've understood your customer now you, and, and you've understood your products and services and how they meet the needs of your customers, let's make sure that we have um, that product to market fit. And so by that, I mean, making sure that your customer and and on this slide, this is this is called the value proposition canvas. It is um, it is a canvas that was developed by a company called Strategizer, and it really helps to visually show how uh, it shows the fit uh, between your social enterprise and your customer. So if we look at uh, the value proposition canvas, the circle uh, on the right then represents your customer, and that would be your customer profile. You can see here in terms of, a, of uh, jobs that your customer is trying to do. Um, this area here, if you can see my cursor, the gains that your customer is seeking. So what outcomes and benefits are they hoping to achieve? And, and similarly, the pains. And so what are those barriers? What are the risks that your customer is thinking about as they seek to do your, your, their jobs? On the left, this represents the social enterprise. And so this is where you look at then the products and services that you are offering and how your products and services then create the gains, help to support the gains then that your customer is trying to achieve. And then similarly, how do your products and services relieve the pains that your customer may be feeling? So I would recommend that you use a tool like this you, you make it large, put it on a wall and use sticky notes. I'll see if I have a sticky note here. Um, I use uh, sticky notes um, and what you can do then is to write your different ideas on a sticky note, put it on your canvas and do that rather than writing on the canvas directly. That way you can always be updating your canvas as you get a better understanding of your social enterprise. And so you may find that something that you thought was, uh, was true is, is no longer. So you can simply remove it from your canvas. 
So I highly recommend then make a large canvas, put it on a wall, and, and use sticky notes uh, as you go uh, as you go forward. So let's look at um, let's look at a sample. So I'm not going to read each and everything that's on this page here, but let's pretend we are we have uh, we're starting a coffee shop, and um, we have spent time looking at our customer, really trying to understand our customer need. This is the kind of canvas that we've developed, and so on the right. Uh, here in terms of your, your customer, you can see that we've identified three core jobs that the customer is trying to, to do. So the one is to satisfy their hunger or thirst. Not surprising, you're going to, you want to go to a coffee shop. Um, some customers though, want to meet with friends. So it's a social job that they're trying to do. Um, and some customers are really looking for a place to study or work. So those would be three jobs. When you work with these tools, um, it's, it's really only, only focus on the, the most important jobs, the, the core jobs that someone is trying to do. You don't need to identify each and every job that, uh, that they are doing. Really focus on the, on the big ones. And so we have thought about our customers and, and I'll just maybe use an example here to give you a sense of how this tool works. But when we thought about the gains, so things that the customer is hoping to achieve in terms of their jobs. The customer is hoping that, that there is a comfortable atmosphere. So when they come to a place to satisfy their, their thirst or to meet with friends, they're hoping that the atmosphere itself in the coffee shop feels good. And so um, we, once we've established that as something that the customer is, is trying to achieve, then we can look at our products and services and our coffee shop and we can say well you know we better make sure that we have seating options that are flexible and that uh, create those spaces where people can either have conversations or or maybe do work uh, by themselves and so you can see I've drawn a number of arrows here that really show you how um, the different things that are important to your customer you can link them to uh, the things that you're going to do as a social enterprise. And so as one more example here, as an example of a fear, so a pain for, for most customers, myself included, is that you're, you're really um, fearful that you know, the restaurant is gonna be dirty, so it's not gonna be clean. And so, so we can make sure that that's not going to be the case by making sure as we design our social enterprise that we have clear cleaning procedures, and that we're going to be frequently cleaning the space. So this is the kind of exercise that you can go through in terms of really making sure that you've got that product to market fit. So I highly recommend this, this approach. Let's look at tip number six. And tip number six then is build your business model. So again, this is all about strategy. Long before you get to the specifics of building your website, of, of coming up with your, your brand and your colors, this is really about thinking at that strategic level. So build your business model. So understand what is your value proposition. Identify your key customer segments. Identify how you're going to reach them. Uh, look at how you're going to generate revenue, so your revenue model. Um, identify the resources that you have, uh, the partnerships that you're going to need, and identify your, your cost structure. So all of these things are important as you think about your business model. And so let's turn to, to an example again here. Um, and this is another tool that was developed by Strategizer. It's called the Business Model Canvas. And similarly to the, the uh, value proposition canvas that we uh, talked about a few minutes ago, this is a tool that you can use then to, to look at your social enterprise at a very high level and a strategic level. So this is a way to understand how your social enterprise is going to create, deliver, and capture value uh, between yourself and your customer. And so, these are areas then that um, you can populate. And again, using a similar approach, sticky notes, make this, make this uh, large, put it on your wall, 
and then you can use sticky notes to identify the, uh, the, uh, these areas. So customer segments, and again, the key segments that you're going to serve, customer relationships. Um, this is how you, the overarching relationship of how you relate to your customers. So it could be an in-person relationship as an example. Channels then represent the, the ways that you interact with your customer, everything from your store to social media, uh, your value proposition, the key activities. So those activities that are really, really important that will make you successful, the resources that you have and the partnerships that you need. And then along the bottom here, you can see that we have space for your key cost elements and your key revenue um, elements. And so let's go back to our coffee shop examples. And uh, we have also done work on the coffee shop. So you can see now that we've started to develop our business model canvas. And we've identified a couple of different customer segments. We've identified pleasure seekers and we've identified workers. Um, you could say uh, workers could be students or workers, workers. Um, you can see that we have established the fact that we have a direct in-person relationship with most of the people that that uh, come to our coffee shop. Uh, but we also know there's, there's a relationship through community, particularly as a social enterprise. We've identified some of the channels that we have. We've identified some value propositions. And when you build your canvas, what you should do is um, use a different color of sticky note for your different segments. So with our pleasure seeker, the value for a pleasure seeker is that it's a comfortable, friendly place to connect and relax. So that is a very different value proposition than say compared to a worker who is there to do work. And so for the worker, the value is, you know, it's a convenient place to get things done. Um, you can see here social impact, which is also a value proposition. And we've colored it both yellow and green because it relates to both of our customer segments. So this is how you use the tool. We've identified some key activities. We've also identified some key resources that we have. And we've started to look at some key partnerships. And so as a social enterprise, there may be an opportunity to um, work with a social enterprise, excuse me, a social agency. And maybe through the social agency, um, we can, we can um, hire and train people, say, that have um, disabilities. And so a social agency could be a very important partner. And across the bottom, we have uh, our different cost centers. So we have things like payroll, advertising, and rent, and we have our different revenues. So I hope that has helped you in terms of just um, getting an understanding of this tool if you have not uh, used it before. And as I say, it, we, we highly recommend that you spend time at this level strategically thinking about your social enterprise. Let's turn to tip number eight. And tip number eight is really this experimentation mindset. So um, really coming at your social enterprise um, from the perspective of learning and always being uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the mode of, of wanting to learn. Um, so never assume you want to learn. So develop your minimum viable product. So develop, a, develop your, your product or service so that um, it has enough features that you can go out and you can test your product or service um, in the marketplace. So you can test it with your customer segment. And you can use that test as a way to get feedback from your early customers. So that feedback then will help to validate some of the assumptions that, uh, that you had. Maybe it actually tells you that some of your assumptions uh, were not true. So you're going to have to go back and, and look at your, your, maybe you're going to have to look at your value proposition or your business model again and make some changes. 
Um, but use, use your, the experiments as a way of um, really looking at how your customer uses your product or service, what is their experience, and ultimately, what are the things that they value the most about your product and service? And so when we think of customers and the jobs they're trying to do, um, not everything is, is a priority. So as you work with your customers, by listening, by experimenting, um, you will start to understand what are those high priority things that are most important to your customer. Or, or similarly, what are those uh, barriers? What are those pains that are most important for your customer to, uh, to, to solve? You can use that experience then in terms of experiments, feedback, to then assess your products and services, your model. And then you can, as I say, you can adapt and you can uh, update your, your social enterprise um, as you go forward. Okay, tip number nine. And so tip number nine is, is about knowing your audience and speaking their language. And so this really reinforces some of the early tips, earlier tips that we talked about. So it really, under, it really reinforces the importance of, of understanding your customer, right? What, what jobs are they trying to do, their pains, their gains? And it really speaks to the importance of, um, of understanding that product market fit. So how, how does your products and services, how do your products and services fit with the needs of your customer? And so as you, the, as you understand that, now you're going to be, be able to create those marketing messages that speak to your customer's core motivations. And so you're go, going to be able to tell them about the benefits that your product and services will bring them. Um, and, and that is really what you want to do. Speak their language in terms of um, each customer segment because they have different needs and they have different uh, value proposition you're going to tailor your marketing messages to each of your segments. So what you say to one segment, you may say in a slightly different way to another customer segment. I think the final point here is about storytelling as a social enterprise. So as a social enterprise, you know that the social impact, the cultural, the environmental impact that we're trying to make is so important. So you can use that impact as an important way to tell stories. So tell stories about the work that you do, the people that you help, uh, and the impact that you're having. Let me go to tip number 10. So managing your cash flow. So, so this is a little more operational now. So I've moved away from, from the strategy more into the operational. Uh, but as a, as a key tip, I, I would say this is a big one manage your cash flow. So you want to do two things. You want to encourage your customers to pay you quickly. So how do you do that? Well, you could offer discounts. So you could offer a discount um, if a customer pays you quickly. You could ask for a deposit. So when a customer places an order. Um, so that's something that I do. Um, uh, one of the things that uh, I do at CSED is to consult with organizations. And so if I'm going to uh, enter into a contract, a consulting contract with an organization, I'll ask them for an amount of that contract upfront. So that is similar, that's very similar to a deposit. So, so trying to get some of, pay, of the payment as early as possible. And I think you also want to, to issue your invoices promptly. So, not, not, as, not a factor if you're a coffee shop and people are paying you when they're in the store, but if you're operating a social enterprise where you need to invoice, then it's important to invoice right away. So as soon as you have provided your good or service, make sure that you send that invoice and make sure that you track your invoice to, make, to, to ensure that it has been paid. And if it hasn't been paid promptly, make sure that you follow up to, to arrange for the payment. And I know, and I've had experience with, um, you get busy 
you may complete one job, you're busy with other jobs, and something happens, and all of a sudden, maybe you don't send the invoice to the customer. Um, so all of these things are important. And similarly, then, um, uh, another way to manage your cash flow is to, to not spend your money um, as, you know, uh, to keep your, your cash as long as possible. So, uh, so how do you do that? Well, you take, advantages of, take advantage of payment terms. So if someone sends you an invoice and that invoice says, uh, pay within 30 days, well, don't pay right away. Keep track of it and, and make that payment when you're coming up to that 30-day mark. Similarly, um, you can use electronic funds transfer as a way to delay the payment and make the payment just before it's due. So those are some things that I would suggest in terms of um, managing your cash flow. Let me just go to the last uh, tip uh, before we end here, um, which is, and, th and this is, and I've really saved, I think one of the most important for, for last. And so the tip is to lead with impact, but deliver business value. And so um, what I would want to leave you with is to say that the social impact that you have as a social enterprise is, is not enough to be successful. So your customers expect you to deliver business value. So they expect you to have quality products. They expect you to have a price that's competitive. And so it is so important that while the social impact helps you with the sale, you have to follow through and you have to deliver on the, the business value. And if we go back to our coffee shop example, uh, you can imagine that we would go into a social enterprise coffee shop the first time. And if the coffee and food was terrible, uh, you know, maybe we would come back a second time because maybe we would say, um, you know, let's try them again. But you can imagine if we went a second time into the coffee shop and the food and coffee was still terrible, even if it was a social enterprise, and even if we knew that it was doing great work and, and, uh, and had that community impact, we probably wouldn't go back the third time for that, that coffee and food. So I think this is so important to, um, to uh, deliver business value. So with that, I hope that um, my 11 top tips have been helpful to you. And, um, I hope that, uh, that uh, you have either these are some new things that you can think about, or these, these are some things that you are saying, hmm, that's, you know, I'm doing that already, uh, and that's great. And so with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Jonathan, and uh, we have about 15 minutes. Uh, happy to uh, answer any questions that you have. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael, for this short, dense, clear presentation with 11 practical tips to go further to build your social enterprise. Maybe you have some questions. Some people are, are already having a social enterprise. Maybe you want to go deeper in some details. Maybe you have some general questions. So the time is for you to ask your questions. Vous pouvez poser votre question en français ou en anglais, as you prefer. And if you, um, et si vous présentez votre question en français, Michael va pouvoir uh, comprendre aussi avec l'interprétation. Donc, so feel free to ask your question, to raise your hand if you want to ask it by your voice, or you can write it down on the chat also. Donc, vous pouvez écrire votre, votre question dans le chat également. Donc, uh, so I'll let uh, the first person here, here uh, yeah, Ilse Taba. So the time is for you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I am pleased to know this, this uh, center today. I, I was with a meeting in another room with OCF and they recommended me to participate now. I, I didn't know nothing about you. I'm a newcomer in Ottawa. And okay. fortunately I arrived here and the pandemic started and stopped all of my plans. Although I had worked in my country at higher education level, uh, teaching Spanish. I was, uh, as an associate professor, also I was designated to manage 
the division of social programs um, and outreach where I had the opportunity to connect my students of engineering. I, I come from social and humanities um, to connect them with the non-for-profit organizations and the social work. I, I could make them visible in this area to, to wear a different hat, different from the technical of industrial engineers or system engineers. And at the same time, for the last 15 years, I was collaborating in the board of directors of a charity organization in my city, helping a vulnerable community. And I've been always involved in that. Now here, during this pandemic, I've been reflecting that even if I get a job or I, if I do not get a job, I want to become part of any organization involved that, in this sector that could help me. For instance, I would love to go deeper in social impact assessment because that was an area that I couldn't have the experience of assessed the work that I was doing. I were doing. And at the same time, I have a question for you. Um, I've been observing the city and I, I am struggling between um, open my own business or open this social entrepreneurship. Why? Because I, I am always thinking that I, I want to help to contribute to the city, but I, my, I wonder if you have already identified the needs of the city that the city couldn't um, deal with or if they do not have the workforce or the time or whatever, where I could be very, very useful there. My point is, I don't want to, to be uh, on the moon creating some fantasy. I want to connect my interest in social impact to the real needs of the city. Uh, at the end, I know that I'm going to benefit uh, uh, a particular community, but I want to identify, I would, be, I would feel very comfortable working for any kind of community, right? So if you can help me with that to identify those needs, because I think that my, my target audience could be even the, the, the same city. So this is my concern, thank you. No, thank thank you very much for your for your uh, your question and uh, and welcome uh, welcome to uh, to Canada and the area. Um, I you know I think that um, for someone such as yourself, I think there's opportunity um, in if, if we look at Ottawa, uh, there are approximately eighteen hundred charities, uh, and I think that within charities, there would be many opportunities for someone to, such as yourself, to, to be involved with them in terms of helping them to further their impact. Um, and you mentioned a specific interest in social impact assessment. Um, I think, so I think that's one option and, and, um, and starting to, uh, to be part of the community, whether that is the Atelier, um, Impact Hub Ottawa, uh, working, identifying charities, all ways of getting uh, to become part of the community. Um, I think if, if we're talking about yourself as an enterprise, um, which is also an option where you could establish, you could set up your own business, um, you could focus on this area, then I think you really have to decide in terms of the kind of um, business you are going to set up. And, and I think I'm going to just share my screen here. I would I would come back to, uh, if you can see, hopefully tip number two, I think really coming back to this slide, and this is really about knowing yourself and your motivations. And so thinking about, um, as entrepreneurs need to think about, what are your own financial goals? Um, you know, what are your impact goals? And that will help you determine um, how you should go about if you were if you wanted to start your own business as a social enterprise, that I think would be a good way of doing it as well. Thank you. Uh, une autre question, another question from Mireille Brousseau. 
So, and after Peter's connect. Yeah, great. Thanks very much. Great tips. Uh, really appreciate. Uh, I've heard heard and used some of the tools before, but it, it's nice to hear it again. And I guess for me, I I kind of got stuck at one and two. Um, you know, I I actually I got stuck with one with start with strategy, um, because it, it feels like when I look at all eleven tips, I actually think they're all kind of happening sim simultaneously. So it sounds like maybe I'm doing maybe a little bit too much at once. And when you say start with strategy, um, you know, are you talking, you know, setting, setting goals, identifying, you know, a bit of timeline objectives, you know, like I, I think strategic planning and I'm thinking, you know, what's my, what's my work plan? What am I looking to achieve this year and how am I going to get there? It feels like, it, it feels like maybe the work on aligning with purpose and identifying the customer, really understanding that business canvas needs to come first. But why do you say start with strategy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. And uh, maybe maybe I could be more clear on this, uh, this tip number one. And so when I think about, so when I'm referring to starting with strategy, I'm, I'm actually not saying, you know, build a strategic plan. Uh, what I'm saying is, you need to think about things like your customer, things like your value proposition, things like your business model. To me, that is, you know, those are the strategic elements of, of a social enterprise. So, um, you know, it's an interesting question. And, and uh, I think probably tip number one uh, and that, that notion of strategy really encompasses many of the other tips that, right. uh, that we've talked about. Yeah, no, that's that's helpful. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. And now let now Peter Zimit just is quick. Good afternoon. Uh, Good afternoon. Neat presentation. Thank you for that. One thing I'd like to see, and I haven't seen, and I've been actually having a human rights complaint against the festival. It's a long story, uh, under uh, regarding uh, transparency, and. Um, kind of goes back to the coffee shop issue where um, when I'm looking at an organization and I'm probably not just going to buy the coffee, I like to know how safe and inclusive it is. And that means transparency. And that means not just a nice equality statement, but also what's what staff, what, what is their proactive training? What is their reactive, you know, um, anti harassment policy and procedures? Um, so that if I'm going to quote invest, whether it's buying coffee or you know, fair trade coffee or some sort. Um, I like to see that transparency uh, of an organization um, if you're acting in the good of a social justice or, you know, social enterprise um, and how you operate, how you uh, work, you know, you know, et cetera. And I think that is sadly missing from too many organizations in a, uh, in, in a sense. Um, if you are um yes and and you know all of the and, and a big and it also does protect everybody in your organization but having these policies and procedures online because then it's not your version it's not my version it's your organization's version i can point right to it it does have a layer of protection as well for everybody working because you're all speaking from the same page so i mean i would uh, suggest in somehow looking at the transparency and web transparency because um, if I'm going to invest, donate, volunteer um, in a sponsor, in a charitable organization or anything, I like to see what is online. I'm, that has to be the gateway and portal to see how it works, right? And the other point, I'm gonna be quick on this one, for persons um, uh, in numerary grounds of human rights code, if somebody is in a, particular closet in one of those grounds doesn't have to be queer it could be a health status and they're living in a um an environment whether it's family or community that they really can't come out on any of these issues if i see something on that website that says i'm covered then i can at least go and focus and work for organization knowing that i have some backing because it's up on the website and i can come out when i feel comfortable Right, it's a safety and protection issue that we need to see more of. Sorry for going on. 
Go ahead. No, no, <laughs> no. And I and I would agree with your your uh, your point that you know I think in terms of best practices, organizations need to be transparent. And I think the leading organizations, as you say, have publicly posted their key policies, you know, that have clear messaging in their premise. So I do, uh, I do agree with the point you're making. Thank you. Maybe if you have any, any other questions in the chat, you can ask them. You can raise your hand. You can raise your hand. I have maybe a small question for, for you, like Michael. Uh, like in the social enterprise world, the important part is to have a, 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 a social or environmental mission at the heart of the enterprise. And I would ask you, uh, um, what would be your tips to choose the actual uh, form of your enterprise? Because like in the French world in Quebec, where I come from, we speak about, about uh, a lot about social economy and it's about the nonprofits, the co-ops, uh, but the, the private, like the ink is not part of it actually, but in the Anglophone world, it can be a tool again. So I don't know where it, uh, at C said, do you uh, try to, uh, to suggest or orient the, your social entrepreneurs to say you should choose uh, like the traditional form of the enterprise, a co-op, a nonprofit, or it depends on your goals, on your strategic aspect. So how do you actually select the good form of the enterprise? Yeah, it's a really, really good question, uh, Jonathan. Um, and I would say this, that um, ultimately it depends on the person and their, their motivations, right? And their own requirements. I think in terms of when I think of social enterprise in the purest form, I'm thinking about social enterprises that are run by charities, nonprofits. I think the uh, cooperative structure is also a really interesting structure. As you know, in Quebec, it's, it's quite, uh, quite popular. Um, and it, it ultimately though comes down to the person. So I can remember um, earlier this year dealing with a, an entrepreneur who, um, was starting a new social enterprise and was debating about do they start it, do they structure it as a nonprofit or a cooperative? And as we were talking, the language that the person was using was very much around uh, empowerment um, and giving people a voice and a say in what was done. So that that motivation naturally led him to, to start up a cooperative social enterprise. Um, where I think it is the most challenging um, is when an entrepreneur wants to create a for-profit social enterprise. And I think that's the form that it is most challenging in terms of, and I'm going to go back to Peter in the transparency, is uh, for a for-profit social enterprise to demonstrate that they are actually a social enterprise and are and have a primary motivation of that social impact. And, and it's not about the profit for the shareholders. Yeah, really good question. Thank you. We have another question, Mireille, and then we'll be close to the end of this activity now. Thanks. I, I thought I'd just sneak in here since we do have a couple of minutes left. I, I So thanks very much. I think this, this has been really a great, great little webinar and, and good way to spend, spend lunch uh, together. Um, I'm wondering, Jonathan, if you can tell us, I haven't, I mean, I've, I've signed up for the newsletters from Atelier, but I, I don't think I fully understand uh, the is it is it a service to do you have to be a student of St. Paul's University to access the space or, or like, you know, what what's your what's your uh, your 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 key value proposition to the yeah, community? For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thank you very much. So the Atelier d'Innovation Sociale, uh, it's a non-profit or a social enterprise. So it's a social enterprise also. It's uh, we are located in the St. Paul University, but we have an external door and it's like kind of an autonomous enterprise. So we're not a part of the university. They are students for, uh, from the programs of social innovation, which are members of the atelier, but we have also uh, citizens, uh, freelancers, social entrepreneurs who are also part of the atelier. So everyone, every individual could be part of this space. Uh, we, uh, we rent some rooms to organize events. We also try to coach people if you want to start a project, but there are other organizations like Impact Hub or CSED uh, who have tools actually to help you as a social entrepreneur to 
to start your organization and try to get some funding and some tips to organize your structure. We'll do this little bit. And we're actually having a, a searching for a new executive director also. So if you have any person in your networks, like as uh, people have some experience as a coordinator of this kind of social enterprise, uh, we open like a job application for a few weeks now and we're searching for a new person. And uh, so it's a really open community. It's not only students, it's not only professor for university, it's for everyone. And we're trying to make links with several organizations around like Impact Hub Ottawa, the CCO, CSED, and other members of this community. So it's a, bi a bilingual space in French and English also. Okay. Thanks very much. So, yeah, thank you. And um, and maybe to um, uh, to end this event, I will uh, invite you also. You can follow our uh, Facebook page on the Atelier d'Innovation Sociale. We have also our website. So I'll just share you like the the website here. And um, we have a new event that will happen in less than uh, in the next month, uh, and it will be organized by. Uh, by Isabelle Stein from the CCO, the Conseil de Coopération de l'Ontario. And it will be about the social corporate responsibility, the RCE, uh, for the efficiency and impact of your enterprise. So it's not exactly the same thing as we, as we heard today. The, pres the presentation will be in French, but we have also a translation in English. Donc, vous pouvez participer à cette activité qui va avoir lieu le mercredi 8 décembre. So it's in a month. And we have another activity in January with uh, someone from Impact Hub Ottawa. It will be about social innovation in practice. So uh, I invite you to, uh, to be part of this other activities that we're organizing now. Um, I don't know, Michael, if you want to add some, something before we leave. Just, uh, just uh, Jonathan, just simply to say that uh, delighted to be here with people today and uh, Congratulations to uh, to you and the team at uh, the Atelier for uh, creating the series. And uh, for those that uh, were uh, were with us today, happy to, if you'd like to follow up with me, uh, michael at csedottawa.ca, and we'd be happy to have further conversation. Thanks very much, Jonathan. Great. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, everyone. So, uh, merci beaucoup d'avoir participé à cette activité. Et on se retrouve uh, éventuellement. So, we'll be happy to meet and chat in the in Zoom or in the real life, let's say. That's right. <laughs> Au revoir. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Thank you for being here. Merci. Yeah.